I'm Pastor Ali. And I'm Pastor Kurt. And we're from Seven Seas Ministries. And welcome to our latest message. This one is called, Who is Jesus? And we'd like to talk today about who Jesus is, but from three different points of view. And we're going to start off by reading from Mark 15, 39, which says, So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Mm. And that verse is referring to a Roman centurion who actually witnessed the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. And when, when Jesus died, that was what he, what he said. Mm. Because something in that whole process and the way he died apparently hit this man. Mm -hmm. And so wow. that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Truly, this was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about First of all, who is Jesus, like in the larger sense, mm -hmm. like just kind of in a broad way, who is he? And so he is the son of God. Mm -hmm. He was born of a mm -hmm. virgin. Yes, amen. And he has existed for eternity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't really think about that or grasp that because they think about Jesus coming and being born mm -hmm. of a virgin mm -hmm. and living for 33-ish years mm -hmm. and dying. Mm -hmm. So it's not really it's not really thought about very much that Jesus actually existed for eternity with the Father. Um, but we'll get to that a little bit deeper here in a second. <laughs> so in addition to existing for eternity, mm -hmm. Jesus also was the co-creator mm -hmm. of everything we, mm -hmm. we see. That's right. And that's another thing that a lot of people don't really think about very mm -hmm. often. They just think about the Father saying, you know, let there be light and let the waters part and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that stuff. And But yet, John 1.1 1, 1 tells us everything that we just said mm -hmm. when it comes to Him existing forever, being a co-creator, etc., etc. So, let's read John one one. <laughs> Actually, John one one through three says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God." Mm -hmm. And I got that backwards. It's Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> verse two says, "He was in the beginning with God," mm -hmm. and verse three says, "All things were made through Him, mm -hmm. and without Him, there was nothing made." That was made. Mm. So Jesus was the co creator mm -hmm. of everything we see. He has existed forever and will exist forever. Mm -hmm. He's existed backwards through time and forwards, forward through all time. Mm -hmm. So it's good for us to understand that because we don't want to just box him in and say, well, he only lived here for a short time right. because that takes away from who Jesus really is. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we understand who he is in his fullness, mm -hmm. because as we begin to understand these things more, it will shape our walk with God. Mm -hmm. It will change our walk with God because we get deeper understanding, mm -hmm. and that causes us to see everything differently yes, and right. walk, walk things out differently. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was not just a good man mm -hmm. or a prophet. Mm -hmm. He was God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He was God on the earth, walking with mankind mm -hmm. in human skin. Yes. Feeling human emotions, feeling temptation, feeling joy, mm -hmm. feeling frustration at times, feeling pain, mm -hmm. feeling everything that we feel yes. as human mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. Jesus came and walked the earth as God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And there's a scripture that talks about, and I don't have it right here, but there's a scripture that talks about him being Emmanuel, mm -hmm. God with us. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was God with us. Mm -hmm. So he was not just a man or a prophet or you know mm -hmm. a good rabbi or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. He was way more than that. Mm -hmm. John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw in John 1.1, 1, 1, talks about the Word. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is the Word. And I know that sounds a little confusing, but we're not going to dive into all that now. But just know that when 
John 1, 1 refers to the Word. It's mm -hmm. referring to Jesus. Yeah, right. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And John 1, 14 says, And the Word became flesh and mm -hmm. dwelt among us. Yes, amen. So through that virgin birth, mm -hmm. through that virgin conception, the holy conception of the child Jesus, mm. God came to earth and dwelt among us yes. and walked among us. So now that we've got that established, who here's the next question. Mm -hmm. Who is Jesus to us? Mm -hmm. So we know who Jesus was in the big sense, but who is he to us? Right. You know, all of that doesn't mean much unless we know who Jesus is to us. Yes. So mm -hmm. let's kind of talk about okay. that for a minute. <laughs> See where we go. So John 14, 6 says, Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No one comes to the Father but by me. Mm. So Jesus established himself as our way mm. to get to or to have access to the Father. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of like the bridge that goes over the gap between us and mm -hmm. God. Now, the gap is there because of sin. Mm. So when humanity sinned with Adam and Eve, there was a separation that came between us and God. And humans were no longer allowed to have direct access to God himself. Mm -hmm. So Jesus came to bridge that gap. So he's like the bridge that fills in the canyon between us and God. Mm -hmm. And he died to offer us forgiveness. And redemption. So not only is he the bridge, but he's also the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice who came and gave his life for us mm -hmm. so that we are, again, so we're not held away from, far away from the Father. And the reason he had to do that was mm -hmm. because he was perfect. Right, exactly. We couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, God couldn't just pick anybody out of the crowd. Right. You know, no. had no. to be perfect. Right. <laughs> we had to be perfect. And there mm -hmm. was not one of us that was right. perfect. Right, right. He was sinless. Mm -hmm. He came and he lived a sinless life mm -hmm. despite going through everything that he went through, all the temptations, all the persecution, mm -hmm. the, the ridicule that he faced. I mean, even his family mm -hmm. didn't believe who he was in the beginning. Right. It was only after he had died that mm -hmm. his family finally embraced and believed. Mm -hmm that he was who he said he was. Yes. And so Jesus walked through all of that mm. without a single sin. Mm. And that was the only, like you said, the only way that he mm. could be offered as a sacrifice because he was without spot. Mm -hmm. He was without blemish. Right. He was without sin. Mm. And so it's funny if you look at the Old Testament, yes, how they I, would... Use they an would, animal, perfect. Yeah, it had to be a lamb. Yes. Mm -hmm. They would sacrifice a lamb and that lamb... Could not have a single spot or blemish Imagine. on it. It had to be mm. pure white. If yes. it had even one black speck of yeah. wool or <laughs> whatever, it, it was it was right. a no go. It, wow. it wasn't happening. Mm. So Jesus came to end those sacrifices as the final, ultimate mm. sacrifice of all time for humanity. So, in addition to all of that, or as part of that. Jesus also created a way for us to become children of God. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the scripture in front of me, but right. I'll, I'll put we'll the put reference <laughs> on the screen. But it talks about how if we, and I'm really roughly paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but if we put our faith and trust in him, he gives us the right to become right. children of God. Yes. That's kind of the gist mm -hmm. of it. We'll put it up so you can look too. <laughs> so the third question is, who are we to Jesus? Right. So we talked about who is Jesus in the big sense? Who is Jesus to us? Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about who are we to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that we need to understand all of this and especially who we are to Jesus mm -hmm. in, a, in order to change, mm -hmm. change how we see everything. Right. Because this, this will shape our walk with God. When we get the knowledge of the first two questions, mm -hmm. and then we get the understanding of the third question, mm -hmm. it all comes together to really shape our walk with God. Yes. So Jesus, again, was not just a man. He wasn't just a prophet. He wasn't just a good person. Jesus came, and because he was God in the flesh, 
if you walked in and displayed a type of love mm. that people had never seen before. Right. And nobody understood it. Mm. Even his disciples had a hard time understanding this mm -hmm. love. And, you know, what just popped into my head is when the guards came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane so they could take him to be tried, <laughs> yeah. Peter took out a sword. Yes. <laughs> sliced off a guy's ear. A reaction. The human reaction. All of us probably. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't think there's any of us that wouldn't have done the same right. thing. We would want to protect him. But Jesus immediately rebuked him mm. and yes. told him that is not how we do things. That's right. Again, mm. I'm paraphrasing. That's not how we do this. Right. <laughs> because he had a love and compassion for humanity that we we couldn't understand right. it. They couldn't understand it. We still, to this day, mm. can't fully understand it. We can get understanding, mm. but we can't fully understand it. Mm -hmm. We can't comprehend that love. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to give, like, we can kind of see that more easily if we put ourselves in his shoes mm -hmm. with people slapping his face and spitting on him mm -hmm. and mocking him. Mm -hmm. And how would we react right. without the Holy Spirit? If somebody slapped our face, the first thing we want to do is slap them right back. Mm -hmm. I know that seems kind of funny, but it's a natural rea reaction. <laughs> it's a natural reaction. You know, if somebody so, slaps you, the first thing you want to do is slap them back. Mm -hmm. And it's only by the tempering of mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in our lives that we can learn not to do that, mm -hmm. that we can learn to turn the other cheek. And that is what... I guess, freaked people out so much when it came to what Jesus taught and how he lived his life because the human mind can't comprehend right. it. We just can't comprehend turning the other cheek. I, I like the fact, though, that he did. He does teach us, mm -hmm. you know, that we have room in there where we can be taught. Right, Like exactly. when he did, when Peter did cut the air, the air off the man, I yep. mean, he... Put it back on. He brought yeah. healing to him. Yes, you know, exactly. Like how many times does he have to pick up the pieces after we've done things that are wrong? You know that. Right. You know, he gives us that room to to learn and to grow, yeah. and then he helps us fix our mm -hmm. mistakes and yes. our errors as we go. Right. And and see, Jesus walked in a type of mercy and compassion mm -hmm. that just it drew the people to him in like in hordes, mm -hmm. massive numbers of people. They came because he was different than all the other mm -hmm. prophets that had come yes. along. He was different than all the other teachers. So people would come from miles mm -hmm. away to mm -hmm. hear him speak. And you know, they had to walk. Right. Think about that. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't go you know, a few a miles or, or ten <laughs> miles on a bus or, or even a wagon. Most likely these people got there by walking. Mm -hmm. There were no freeways, there were no cars, there were no bicycles, there were no anything like mm -hmm. that. It was either walk, ride a donkey, maybe they had, I'm sure they must have had some kind of carts or whatever mm -hmm. that they had donkeys pull, but you're talking about thousands and thousands right. of people mm -hmm. making their way to see him because of his love, his mm -hmm. mercy, his mm -hmm. compassion, and the difference that they saw between him and any of his predecessors. Mm -hmm. They just, they were drawn to him by that, that yes. mercy, that compassion, and that great love that he mm -hmm. had for the people that he encountered. Yes. And that love that he showed to the people, that he expressed, and that he exhibited mm -hmm. by example, mm -hmm. changed the hearts and lives of many, many people that yes. he encountered. And, you know, 12 of those people became the apostles. Mm -hmm. And think about how that love and that mercy and that compassion changed their hearts mm -hmm. to the point where when Jesus died and then rose again, gave them their commission mm -hmm. and sent them on their way, mm -hmm. they turned the world upside down yes, in His right. name mm -hmm. because of that love, yes. because of the love and the mm -hmm. mercy that He showed to others. And you know, a good example of that is when the woman was caught in adultery mm -hmm. and she was dragged out into the streets by a group of people yeah. who all had stones in their hands mm -hmm. to throw at her, mm -hmm. to kill her. And Jesus was there. He came in amongst the crowd and 
I'll put the reference up so you can read the whole thing. But ultimately, he said some things mm -hmm. that caused those men to drop their stones and yes. walk away. Mm -hmm. And he approached the woman afterward and asked her, Woman, where are your accusers? Mm -hmm. And she said, They're not here. Right. They're gone. And so he told her, I, need, I will not condemn you either. Mm -hmm. if, if they've left and they are no longer condemning you, I will not condemn you either. But go and sin no more. He was talking about when, you know, who of you, among you have yes. not sinned, right. cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. And nobody could cast the stone because right. they looked at themselves and mm -hmm. they thought, well, I've sinned, and I've mm -hmm. done this or I've done that. Right. And they all put the, the stone down and, yeah. and nobody cast that stone. No. Nope. At her and you know that's what's so awesome about his love mm. even though he's teaching us it's that love that that just goes flows right through him even mm -hmm. in messages like that even in teachings like that right you know he ha he has a way of having it look you look at yourself right mm -hmm. without feeling all that condemnation mm -hmm. and you know, he has a way of showing us right who we are and what we've done wrong and how yeah. to fix it without you know, feeling like we've been beaten up or, you right. know, abused in any way. It's his yeah. love. It's the power mm -hmm. of his love that has a way of doing that. Yeah, and and he had that. Like, he would speak in ways mm -hmm. that was soft. Mm -hmm. And it's not that he never spoke harshly. He did, especially to the religious right. people of that day. He would speak harshly to them because they were hypocrites. Firm, very firm, yeah. you know, with, with what he was saying right. and making his point, mm -hmm. you know. But in this case, with the, the woman who had been caught in adultery, he told her right out, neither do I condemn you. Mm -hmm. But he wrapped it up by saying, go and sin no more. Right. So he didn't leave it hanging as though the adultery was okay. Mm. He told her to go and sin no more. And it, it was that kind of love. And we don't hear any more about that woman after that. Right. But ha that had to have left a lasting impact on mm -hmm. her life. Right. And so we need to understand that he sees us with that mm -hmm. same love and mercy and compassion. Yes. And when we finally start to get that and we start to walk in that love ourselves, mm -hmm. it will change everything about us. And it, right. will, it will spill out onto the people around us yes, that's and right. bring change on, on those people's lives mm -hmm. as well over Amen. time. Yes, Amen. that's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so let's pray. Yes. Father God, we thank you, thank Lord, you. for your faithfulness. Yes. We thank you, Father, that you chose to send Jesus to earth, that he came as God in the flesh, to show us the way to love, to show us true mercy and compassion and how to walk that out in our lives. And thank you, Father, that he was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice and give himself for us. Thank you for all that you do, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to become your children, mm -hmm. yes. to become children of God. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for all that you do, Lord God. We just lift you up above yes. all things because you are worthy, yes, Lord. Lord. And we pray in the precious, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, that's kind of a little bit different message for us, a little bit different way of teaching. But mm -hmm. we wanted to do this because it's just so important that yes. we understand yes. all of those aspects of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you guys. We love you. Thank you for all you do. Yes. Thank you for your prayers. Yes. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Thank you so you much. all of it. Yes. We really, truly appreciate it. Yes. And uh, we, we can't express mm -hmm. in, in human words First of all, how much we appreciate it yes. and how much we love all of you. Yes, we really, we do. truly do. Yes. And so we want to ask you to do one more thing before we leave. If you could like this and share it and comment on it and subscribe. <laughs> She's good at that. My Get finger that. always goes crooked. <laughs> but if you could do all those things, we would greatly appreciate it. Yes. And so that's it for now. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, stay close to God, and we will talk again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.